Peggy 16. We have this opportunity that we wouldn't have had years ago to ship a game and then really collaborate with people outside the studio to figure out like what is the best version of that. Honestly, yeah, like we're building something the community has been asking for and it's accumulation of everything that we believe the game needs to be. The upside to that is we're not holding anything back. All the feedback we've heard for the last year is this is it. It's in Forsaken. We want this release to have a, a different tone and a different vibe. We sort of just embrace that Western revenge vibe. You're going to a darker place. You're going to take on a different role as a guardian. A barren landscape with like the asteroid vibe with like tumbleweeds. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that just sounded cool. Grit, man. I want to bring the dirt back. And what better way to start a story than to start it with a prison break? Right. Cade's been filling this prison <laughs> with, with bad guys that are, that are really bad. And so when it breaks, things can happen to all the world. First place you're gonna go to is the Tangled Shore, which is a new part of the reef that you've never seen before. That's right, my friend. It's a collection of lashed together asteroids yes. and rocks out and in the asteroid It's belt. very otherworldly and it's uh, full of... Uh, Pirates and assassins yep, and bad thieves. Guys. It's become a lawless place. It truly is a frontier. It's completely taken over. The most malevolent force there is the Scorn. They're very aggressive. They're always going to charge and push you. The Barons are the top dogs in the Scorn, and each one has gone back and like committed nefarious crimes. I think of it as the reverse Magnificent Seven, like the worst of the worst criminals. You are hunting down these different Barons. In fact, they're called Baron Hunts. So one Baron is a sniper, and you have a sniper versus sniper battle with him. Another Baron is this big, giant, hulking melee character. One of the things we're most excited about is the new weapon system. Hey, if you like Destiny 2, great, play that way. But if you like Destiny 1, great, play that way. But if you're crazy, why not three shotguns, right? Just for the fun of it. We need to have as many ways as possible, and then we need to have people fighting about it. Like, no, nah, man, you, you f***ed up, you're taking the wrong weapons, or can I say <laughs> So random rolls are coming back. Every single weapon is going to feel different when it drops. And we're improving the mod system so you can customize your weapon the way you want it. We've got a whole new masterwork style system coming together where you actually are able to kind of move your levels up over time. And so there's investment back on the weapons again. New supers, yeah. yeah. Create crazy new what's, supers. What's your favorite? Fire knives are mm. awesome, which is a different take on Golden Gun. We took a lot of uh, inspiration from Rise of Iron. Cast that thing. You got a huge hammer now, and you slam that thing down, and it sends out this fire in front of you that then creates a fire tornado. We got to take it to the next level, you know? <laughs> the idea that anyone who plays, however they play, they're going to have some new way to, to engage. Way, yeah. I'm in love with the new Void Warlock uh, teleportation that's like super anime, just like doo -doo 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 -doo. We've been having great games with the, the Arc Warlock. Basically cast this thing, he pulls back. Yeah, and it's gonna break the game, and I think that's amazing, yeah. You know? <laughs> we also wanted a new weapon type that felt meaningful, so we came up with a bow and arrow, so, which seems kind of crazy, but when you use it, you it, feel like godlike. It is utilitarian, it's fantastical, it's also sci-fi. So we have a short range bow, we have a medium range bow, we have a long range bow. We built this guy which is like supposed to be super techy. You're like, why would you ever choose a bow in a game that has an automatic, you know, machine gun? But boy, it's deadly. I mean that's a nice machine gun you got there, buddy, but right? And it's and then it's done. The biggest thing for me going into production on this game was like a new way to play, a new thing to do that like is new to Destiny. Let's see what we've got. We want to be able to give players what they want, but also surprise them. 
Gambit is a brand new mode. Destiny begs to marry PvE and PvP together. It's like adding bacon to peanut butter and jelly. You start off uh, being able to see the other team that you're going to compete against, so you can taunt each other, you can emote. Each team is in their own separate arena, and they're being assaulted by combatants. They're dropping moats for you to collect, you bank them. When you put them in your bank, you're going to send a blocker over to the other side that locks their bank down. They can't put moats into it until they take out that blocker. Filling up your bank with the moats is how you summon your primeval. You burn it down, that's it. Round's over. The interesting part is that we allow one person from your team to go over to the other side and physically invade. I mean, I've seen people that just hate PvP. Like, the first time they invade, and they get multiple kills, they'll come back and they'll be like, suck it! It's awesome. <laughs> we leave the raid team alone. Yeah. I and mean, if you can't tell, like, we just kind of let them do their own thing. But we, this, we have Joe like, over there. For this next raid, we wanted to get back to the epic adventure where you're going out to slay a big monster again. This raid has more bosses than any raid we've ever had before. And we're really excited to get players in there. The raid is actually about more than just the raid. It's about the, the Dreaming City, the place that the raid exists. And it's an in-game destination that we've never done before. It's the Awoken homeland. I could talk about the Dreaming City for hours. It's like if the Vault of Glass and Dreadnought uh, had a baby. If they were right. like twins. Or the twi twins. Yeah, that's actually more accurate. Yeah, they're like, like twins. twins. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had twins, yeah. and then you took those twins, and you just you put them on the doorstep of Peter Jackson, raised them as his own, and then that's the Dreaming City. It is magical and weird and mysterious. It's designed to be a destination that has puzzles that you need to solve. A lot of hidden corners, lots of passageways that might not seem to exist the first time. And the raiders, they affect this destination. They change it for everyone. It's like this cyclical end game place where there's just secrets and different activities that unveil over time. So the Dreaming City that you see at launch is not going to be the same Dreaming City two, three weeks later. So with every design decision we've made for the Forsaken, like the first thing we ask is, how will the community react to this? Players want their investment in Destiny to matter, and they want to be able to see that reflected in the content. We knew we wanted to do something for the collectors in our game, so we built a feature called the Collections. It's a way for you to track all the items that you can go out and acquire. There's so much gear in our game. There are 2,000 items you can get. Go get them. You can look at sets and you can say, I haven't filled out this set. What do I have to do to go get it? If I want to find like how many guns in the world, I can actually go look now. We also had a triumphs thing, which is just acknowledging your achievement. It like ties into records, it ties into lore. It's a thing that can help you drive like, hey, I want to do that. And if I do those things, I can get a title. This, like I can have a title yeah, floating over like, my name that says that I'm a god or whatever. Not, not me, but like you. <laughs> Wanting Forsaken to feel like a game that never ends. So we're going to reinforce the hobby and make the experience something that can be played night overnight. We're changing the weapon slots. We're changing how the pursuits work. We're adding new features like the collections and the triumphs. We built Gambit. We've got a whole bunch of new weapons to chase, exotics that are really powerful. We have Lisa focusing on some sweet new exotic armor. Maybe we gone overboard, like dialed it too high. Or to go out there and collect in the world, exotic armor pieces to go out there and hunt. We're working on armor perks, random rolls, new mod system, new subclass paths. We're making Forsaken for people who love Destiny. Making a game that we can all love, that, that is the goal. That's what we're gonna constantly be pushing towards, always. Everything we're building is through that lens.